Today we have Will Bosey, fresh off his ascent of Burden of Dreams. We're going to be doing a load of digital force testing and strength testing with him here at the Lattice HQ. Yeah, yeah, really nice and flat. That's way better. Really, really good. Just think of Stefano. You're going to absolutely rinse him. Do not let Stefano get ahead of you. Well, I'm completely broken, but now we're going to do more testing. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, really good. What's up, YouTube? We're doing <laughs> critical force theory testing. What are we doing? Uh, maximal voluntary contraction. Right, we're doing maximum voluntary contraction testing. So I think basically how hard you can pull on a crimp. <laughs> First test that we're going to be doing today with Will is going to be maximal voluntary contraction. So looking at the total force, the maximum force that he can produce on a 20 mil edge on the digital board. How much fingerboarding have you been doing recently? Because we know you've been doing a lot of climbing on Bird of Dreams. Yeah, so I've been pretty much just on finger intensive climbing, but actual finger boarding, I've not done much recently at all. And there is one important thing that you have potentially here to maintain is the top position on the leaderboard <laughs> I on still, digital testing. I still have that. You Crazy. still have it. So is that uh, for the test we're doing right now? Yep. So okay. you, haven't even, <laughs> you haven't even come back and beat Stefano or anyone else. You just beat see, myself. You just beat yourself. Here in the wild of the Lattice XQ, we have Cam Hartley. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so we've also got here filming with us today, Cam Hartley, who's one of our coaches at Lattice, who is doing his PhD on a climbing specific subject and is also really good with the data collection. So whilst me and Will are doing the tests, Cam is gonna be recording everything here on the computer. And it's gonna be coming through and then processing the data so we can actually look at the results today and see how well Will did. Phil, come, on, come, on, come, on, come 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 on. That's it, good, hold it on, hold it on. Three, two, one, time. Wow, it's so slippy on the pinky. I was down to like three fingers. Go, come on, that's it, all the way through. All the way through. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Still, I find it so, like this edge is so slippy for me. But I think my pinky is being so short, it like is always like here yeah. rather than there. Can you not the, um, a, like half crimp the little finger on it? Like to half crimp, I'd have to be so high up. Ah, uh, would you, yeah. Is the, which is why I basically really struggle to fingerboard because this is always in drag, so it always then just pulls blisters there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it, come really on, good, on. really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, yeah, yeah. four, come on. Three, two, one, time. Good. That's it, come on. Good, 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 good. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, really nice and flat. That's way better. Really, really good. Come on. Three, two, one, time. The end was like so bad. So what we're gonna do now is we've just tested Will in the four finger half crimp position, which is typically where we do our digital testing with most athletes, but I think it's really interesting also to look at the three finger drag position, partly because of the climbing and the grip types involved with Burden of Dreams and Will's obviously in really good shape with that at the moment, but also just to see that variance in grip position because if you look at the best athletes in the world, they'll tend to score really good values across a number of different grip positions. They're not just strong in a full crimp position or just strong in a three finger drag. It's across the spectrum. So I think it'd be interesting to see what Will gets in it. Yeah, I think you'll uh, do well on the three finger drag. Hopefully, when I've done three finger drag before, I never really train it. Like, I never fingerboarded it. I did a couple sessions full stop. But whenever I've tried, I've been able to do the same, match the weight I can do in four finger half crimp. So I'm hoping it'll be about the same. Go, come on. Nice. Come on That's guys. it, really come good. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come really on. good. Four, three, two, one time oh that felt super weird nice good come on. come on come on come on come on that's it come on come on yeah you've got five seconds left come on three two one. really good come on good. wow i felt like i was that's slipping at the well end better. test we're going to do now is going to be called the rate of force development test and this normally to people is also another word for contact strength and i think for you will this will be really interesting to look at because we talked about earlier burden of dreams yeah. being something where you're snatching between these holds, you're trying to generate force really, really quickly. So this test is maybe gonna be a little bit more relative to that project and the climbing that you're doing at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I'm gonna do well on this one. 
um because it definitely seems like everything i've been doing recently so and the way that we're going to record this is that you're going to generate nothing on the fingerboard and then very quickly you're going to try and go to absolute maximum and then we're going to measure how quickly you're getting towards a percentage of your maximum peak force makes sense just pull as hard as i can as fast as i can got it that's it yeah yeah just like bouldering <laughs> exactly go this next test is the one that everyone dreads, including Will, because <laughs> he's done this before. It's yeah. critical force testing. Yeah, this is absolutely brutal, this one, because it just feels like it never ends. This particular test is a really interesting one in terms of how the energy systems work and complement each other in climbing. So we're looking at both the anaerobic and aerobic output of the finger flexors in the forearm so that we can understand the total force that Will can produce all the way from peak force right at the start when he's entirely fresh through to crossing over his aerobic threshold and the kind of force that he can generate after three, four minutes of climbing, which for you will be an interesting one to see because you're both <laughs> a boulderer and a sport climber. Yeah, I mean, I still picture myself as a sport climber, although I don't think that's very true anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've obviously coming from a big sport climbing background. So I think I used to do quite well on this, mm -hmm. whereas now I would imagine I'd do worse, but yeah, need to find out. I just don't know which arm to try with yet. It's I mean, we could question. do both. No, no, <laughs> no, let's not do both. No one ever says that. So you're doing seven seconds of pulling, okay. seven seconds of rest. For four minutes? For four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Wait, so how many goals is that? Because you do six goals per minute, so what, 24 pull-ons, is it? That's good maths. Yeah, look, yeah, yeah. look. <laughs> yeah, 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 24 pull-ons. Look, I, I dropped out of uni, okay? Let's get the facts on the table. <laughs> but by dropped out of uni, I don't mean like I went, did two years, was like, oh, this is hard and bailed. I went to my first lecture and then quit. <laughs> really good, come on. Come on, come on. That's it, really you good. Try a bit harder next time, you're not beating your score. Come on, come on, try and beat it, that's it, you're beating it, come on. That's it. Yeah, come yeah, on. that's yeah, better, yeah, yeah, come yeah, yeah. on. Yeah, really come on, good. Come on, come on, come on. That's come on, come really on. good. Three, two, one, time. Yeah, good. Two, one. Come on, on. that's it. Come on. Come on, try and beat that's it. That's it, come really on. good, really good. Come on, that's it, really good. Get set, get set on it properly, come on. Yeah. Come on, that's it. Come on. Yeah, that's it. There that's way better. Really that's really way good, better. Really good, really good. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on. Bah! That's it, come on, come on. Keep pulling, keep pulling. You're doing really well. Come on, come on. On. Yeah. That's it, just on. find that groove. The score's good. It's just nice and steady now. It's really good. It. Come on. Two, come on. one, go. That's oh. it, just settle into it now. Come on. Really good, come really on. good. Come on, come on. That's it. Just think of Stefano, you're going to absolutely rinse it. him. Do Come not on. let Stefano get ahead of you. Blinky, blinky, blinky. Go on, go on. Yeah, there you go. Oh, it's absolutely <laughs> savage, this. Like, it's really hard, isn't it? It's just like you got to try and like pull your max, and then for the seven seconds, it's like you pull on for free and just go like, ugh, like, just give up after the first couple of reps. It's crazy. I think watching you on that test as well, and just not just the physical element of it, and seeing that you dropped off quite early, but I think the mental aspect of it was also really interesting. Yeah, I've not done anything like that in a long time. Yeah. I feel yeah. Like I've basically not done any like circuit training or anything for a while. So like actually remembering to like when you're tired to like that engage and pull was really hard. Well, I'm completely broken, but now we're going to do more testing. <laughs> Will's completely broken. <laughs> He's just done the critical force testing. And now I'm going to push him even harder. <laughs> What a great coach I am. <laughs> I think it'd be interesting for everyone watching just to have a look at one of the big muscle groups involved with climbing. I think it's interesting to look at because yeah. a lot of people watching, you're probably gonna be thinking, Will is one of the strongest boulders in the world. I bet this guy is pulling body weight plus on a two rep max pull up. Yeah, but that's not the case, is it? It's definitely not the case. What we'll probably see with this and I'll put my neck on the line in terms of predicting here, is that Will <laughs> will, he'll sit at a level where essentially the big muscle groups involved with upper body strength are not a limiting factor for the performance that he's looking for. So he'll cross that threshold, 
but he won't get into a zone when we go, oh wow, this guy's like a pro calisthenics athlete. It's just enough to climb hard. So I've put on 40, I don't know. Okay. I was thinking... It looks like a good size stack. It looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, it's because it's like massive amounts of pretty lightweight, so it looks a lot bigger than it is. Yeah, good, Will. Really good. Good form. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, really good. Whoa. I mean, that was really hard. It, but it, I got there. I would also say that that was considerably better form than I see almost everyone do. Uh, what do you reckon, five kilos more or two and a half? The thing is, if we do two and a half, it's kind of like admitting defeat. I think we should do five, what are these? Yeah, yeah, we should do, we should do five. Come on, Will. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Good. That's it. Yep, strong. Come on. Last one. Come on, come on, pull it all through. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You've got this, got this, got this. Come on. So we'll give you the halfway between that. So we'll give you 42.5. It's results time. Okay, well, I think this is gonna be really interesting because you are in most definitely a different phase of your climbing, I would say, compared to when we previously tested. Yeah. First off is your maximal voluntary contraction. So we tested you in both the four finger half crimp and then the three finger drag. Yeah. For your four finger half crimp, you had a result of 122% or 121.9% body weight with your left hand and then 120% with your right hand. So actually very, very evenly matched, yeah. which is a generally seen as a good thing, but also not a problem if there's a difference. Where I think it's interesting is that one, your top peak forcer is a little down from where we previously tested, but not loads. Yeah. But secondarily is that the difference between the left and right hand score is it's much, much flatter now. Previously, you had tested 128% with your left hand and 114 with your right. Okay, but now I you're... was a couple kilos different in weight. Yeah, so some difference that you have here is that you were lighter than you were now a couple of years yeah. ago. So just under three kilos lighter. Yeah. So you put on some muscle mass over the recent years, but the total Hopefully. absolute force that you're pulling is very, very similar actually. So That's a lot of the difference we're seeing is just down to some changes in body weight. So let's have a look at your three finger drag. Almost identical score. Oh wow. With your right hand. Yeah. Just to touch down on your left. So there is some small difference. That's cool. So kind of what we were expecting in yeah. general. Yeah. And I think that is on the whole a really nice result to see that there's not this big mark difference between two key grip positions that you're going to use climbing all the time. Okay, rate of force development. So this so, was how fast I could engage yeah. on an edge. Yeah. So this is your contact strength. This is the big one. I don't understand the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're doing is we're looking at how long it's taking you to generate 80% of your maximal voluntary contraction. And this is going to be measured out in milliseconds. So you have a very similar metric on both the left hand and right hand side between 280, 290 milliseconds. Actually, if we extrapolate this out into that V17 range, you very comfortably sit bang on in the mean for V17. That's cool. Which so average for a V17 climber. Yeah, which kind of makes sense. <laughs> if you're climbing at that standard at the moment, yeah. you're not way out. Let's have a look at critical force now. Oh. Those don't look like good numbers. <laughs> so in terms of the force that you could generate all the way through that four minute period, what we're seeing is that by the time you've plateaued or also bottomed out on that curve and you've got a consistent force that you're generating over that last six reps or so, is you're coming in at 41% of body weight for that critical force, which is that threshold between yeah. your aerobic and anaerobic performance where you can maintain a much longer duration of effort. And this number is quite a bit down from previous testing that we've done previously. Yeah. Which I don't think 
it's would not surprise a surprise. Us. It is sad, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> but it's definitely not a surprise considering I've not been doing this sort of training or climbing really. Last piece of data that yep. we did some testing on as well today was the two rep max pull up. Yeah, and I said to you before that we may not actually expect you to be like some sort of professional calisthenics athlete <laughs> pulling 100% of your body weight and um, you know adding another 70 kilos on top of you yeah. when you do that. And there's a kind of threshold where we would expect elite athletes to sit at. And that threshold is 163.5%. 163, okay, yeah. So um, that includes your own body weight plus the yeah. added weight. Yeah. You came in at 164%. Yes, so I've made it. <laughs> you squeaked in. It's the value that we would want to see if we were doing... Yeah any kind of training cycle when we were collecting some metrics and going, well, where's your efforts best spent and where are you going to see a return in performance? And if we tested you and see these kind of numbers, it's not, well, we need to do loads yeah. of upper body pull work because you're at the threshold where it's going to start to have a reduced return yeah. on those training hours and resources put in. So ultimately what we see here is from doing some testing is that you walk away from something going, okay, all these things are more or less lining up where we would want to see them at the moment. They may not be yeah. a limiting factor for performance or the next grade or the next project you want to do, but there is one clear area where you go, ah, yeah. work to be done, Yeah. but you've got previous metrics and numbers to aim for. So that's kind of useful data in itself. And that's where we would just go back into training cycle again. Yeah. Hard graft. Yeah, and then hopefully come back and be able to hold that edge and make this graft look good. I guess that kind of rounds it out, doesn't it, really? Hope you've enjoyed Will's testing session. Yeah, sorry for all the faces I've pulled at the camera, probably. But yeah, that was really good fun and hope everyone enjoyed. Mm -hmm.